believe it or not, we're actually at the last two session, sections of Math 240 in chapters 9, 9, and 9, 10. And in this video, I'm just going to be talking about uh, chapter 9, 9, which are uh, linear systems. Um, they're like linear autonomous systems or something in a textbook. And the big idea in this chapter is essentially like, I, 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 I honestly, I don't know what these chapters are for. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of differential equations. And I don't really know with my background, like, uh, like certain applications of this, uh, these kinds of differential equations. I'm sure there are um, many because differential equations appear everywhere. So let's just approach it then, uh, the linear systems. I'm going to shoot this. We're going to do this video in the following way. I'm actually going to be following the book um, quite a bit here. And the biggest reason why is because uh, this table right here, uh, ignore that purple arrow for now. Uh, this table right here, this 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 anchors section 99. This table is super important. So this is page 651, 651 of your textbook. Okay, and yeah, this this is a very important table for section 99. And I'll be going through then these examples right here uh, to to, and we'll see how uh, uh, how to do these kinds of problems. So. They almost always ask them in this manner right here, characterize the equilibrium point for the linear system x prime is equal to ax. So let's go back. We want to characterize the equilibrium point and uh, sketch the phase portrait. So the sketching part really depends on professors. Some professors really want you to sketch them. Some professors could give less of a crap about you learning how to sketch phase portraits. So I'm going to cover both. You probably only need to know how to characterize equilibrium points, which is super easy. And so then let's look at the first uh, matrix they have. Uh, oh yeah, for the linear system, x uh, prime is equal to ax. Okay. So then you have a is equal to negative one, negative two, negative two, negative one. All right. And this, uh, so what do you want to do? How do you characterize equilibrium points? Uh, you want to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So uh, to characterize, actually, to characterize, um, to characterize the equilibrium point, this is eigenvalues. Okay, and then to sketch the plane phase portrait, if the characterization doesn't tell you what it looks like, then you want to look at the eigenvectors. Okay, sometimes the characterization of the equilibrium point just straight up tells you what it's like, and We'll, we'll see an example of that. So uh, we want to see the determinant of a minus lambda i, and this is ends up being lambda squared plus two lambda minus three is equal to zero. Okay, so work that out, right? Negative one minus you, you guys know how to do this. This is the second to last chapter of the book, or section of the book. Like, come on. Uh, uh, okay, so actually that's a plus. This is a minus. I still don't know how to factor. So we get lambda is equal to negative three and one. Okay, so now we go to our handy dandy table that I said was super important. And what do you have? We have lambda is equal to negative three and one, which means it's an opposite sign eigenvalue, which means it's a saddle. Okay, so that's how you use this table, right? Because negative three and one are opposite signs. And so going back here, this is now then a saddle point. Okay, a saddle point. And now let's sketch uh, the the phase plane, so I'm gonna do it over here. All right, so so what does a saddle point look like? Well, a saddle point, uh, and, and so first of all, where is the equi equilibrium point? Um, for linear systems, the equilibrium point's always at zero, zero, okay? Again, for linear systems, the equilibrium point's only gonna be at zero, zero. You don't have to find it, it's just at zero. Um, and that's because zero, zero is, I think, in the null space of this matrix. Uh, I might be wrong. Uh, that is definitely wrong, so. Don't quote me on that. Uh, or, anyways, for linear systems, equilibrium point zero zero. Okay. So now, what do we want to do? Okay. For saddle points, uh, and for when you have real eigenvalues, when you have real eigenvalues, not complex ones, uh, you want to know where the eigenvectors go. Okay. So eigenvectors, if lambdas are real, and so now we need to find uh, eigenvectors, which I didn't do. So lambda equals negative three. And what do I get? That's uh, that's two negative two negative two two. All right, so v one is going to be one one. And now uh, this is lambda equals one, and I get negative two negative two negative two negative two. Right, 
and v is equal to one negative one. Right, so I got I got two eigenvectors, v one and v two. So from the equilibrium point, I want to plot these eigenvectors. So what is one one? One one goes like that, right? And one negative one, I go one negative one goes like that. Okay, and so for now, don't actually have these arrows in there because that's actually really bad. So just draw them like that, and now just extend them through the origin. Okay, like this, cool. And now we can decide what direction those arrows point in. Am I going into the origin or out of the origin? So how the hell do I find those? Well, let's let's take a let's consider. So this, so this uh, this line right here, right, has the general direction of of the eigenvector one comma one. So what's a point on this line? That's not the origin. Well, a point on this line, like right here, is going to be one comma one, right? Because we went in the direction of one comma one. So, what you have to do then is you have to take a. So after you find the eigenvalues, and then you find your eigenvectors, which is not necessary, right? You don't need to find the eigenvectors if they're imaginary, because you can't plot imaginary eigenvectors. Now you need to uh, evaluate. Uh, a at points okay and so uh up here we said a point was one comma one right so a was negative one negative two negative two negative one if i evaluate at one comma one we get negative three negative three and this tells me the direction that i'm going at uh on at the point one comma one and so if we look up here negative three negative three is over three right and down three which means i'm pointing that way okay Cool. So I'm pointing this way. All right. Now what? Okay. So where are other points? Well, now I have other points. I have this point here, right? Well, this is one negative one uh, coming from, you know, this eigenvector. And then you can deduce the other points. I mean, this point up here is negative one comma one. This point down here is negative one, negative one, right? And you'll see that uh, it'll look something like this. Your face portrait now will look something like that okay so over here we're coming in down from the bottom left we're coming in and then from the origin we're going out along that uh, to the bottom right and then we're going out along the top left as well okay and so now what so now we have the directions on our eigenvectors uh we want to draw then the other lines uh, of the saddle and it's called saddle point because I got all these lines coming in that um, that you know uh, that that end up being parallel like very close to uh, the the eigenvector line um, and yeah the uh, asymptote to them that's what it's called right so I got these guys rolling in and rolling out okay and so now what? Now I need to draw the direction of these lines. Uh, I need to draw arrows, right, of direction on these guys out here. So on the top, they just essentially follow these arrows on the eigenvectors. So from the top right, I'm headed towards the origin, but then I curve away into the top left. Okay? And the same thing. On the top right, I come in towards the origin, but now I curve away towards the bottom right. And then from down here, I curve in from the bottom left. I curve out the bottom right. Again, following the arrows uh, of the eigenvectors, and so something like that. And then the last one on the left also is like that. Okay, so that's my face plane portrait, and that's a saddle point. So all these points on the outside avoid running into origin. And uh, since I'm just doing uh, the, the example from the book, uh, we can easily easily find what this looks at looks like, and yeah, look at that. It, it's exactly what I did, right? So you're coming in from this side and you're going out on that side, right? And then down here, you're coming in, you're coming in. Now you're going out, right? On the bottom right eigenvector, you're going out. And then, you yeah, know, this guy comes in, comes out. So it's exactly what I drew. Maybe like some angles. Well, I didn't like asymptote this quickly. It doesn't matter. Uh, you'll get full credit, most likely. on the you know, you, You'll definitely get full credit on the exams. Um, if you draw this and yeah so that's how you draw um, an equilibrium point all right or sketch to face portrait now what happens if you have an, a complex uh, or you have a yeah you have a complex eigenvalue 
So let's say a now is negative 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1. And so the determinant of a minus lambda i is going to be uh, lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 5. Okay. So now what? Now lambda is equal to negative 2 plus or minus, whoa, square root of uh, 4 minus 20. <laughs> 420 uh, divided by 2 and and what is this this is negative 1 plus or minus 2i all right so that's those are my eigenvalues and if we go back to the book no I want the previous page please please right okay so here we are um, so all my lambdas now lambdas are negative 1 plus or minus uh, uh, plus or minus 2i well my real parts negative right so I have a complex uh, I have a complex with a negative real part which means I have a stable spiral okay and so what does a stable spiral look like uh, okay so this right here this is uh, this is the, so this is a general spiral point and let's see uh, they don't tell you what a stable spiral looks like yeah, that's fine. We'll figure it out. So a stable spiral, uh, from my understanding, looks something like this. So I have complex eigenvalues, right? So I, I, I can't do, like, eigenvec a, 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 an eigenvector here will also have an i in it, and that's not going to tell me, like, anything about uh, the xy plan, right? Which is what we are actually in. That I didn't label, I didn't label my axes. Whoops. Why? Okay. So... So here's my x, y, y. So again, your equilibrium point is going to be at the origin, and a stable spiral will spiral out like that. Okay. So, uh, so now what? How do I find uh, the orientation of the spiral? Well, what you can do, right, is you can fix a point, right? So let's say this, right? Let me fix x equals 0. So now I'm on this line x equals 0, right? And let me only look at positive y values. So I'm only going to look at this region up here, right? And if I can find the derivative of this uh, system at a point like here, right? Like if I can find the derivative at a point here, or I can find the derivative at the point here, well, the derivative tells me the tangent vector, right, to this curve at that point, and then I can deduce, right, if the tangent vector is going this way, then obviously my spiral is spiraling uh, counterclockwise, right? But if my tangent vector is going this way, then my spiral will have to be spiraling clockwise, okay? So, how do I do that, right? So remember, A really is the coefficient for x prime, x1 prime, x2 prime is equal to negative 1, negative 2, negative, uh, positive 2, negative 1, right? Let's get rid of that plus 2, times x1 prime, x2 prime. So I can find the tangent vector, right, by fixing x1 is equal to 0. Well, in our case, we don't have x1, x2. We actually have x and y, okay? So keep that in mind. We have x and y, not x1, x2, and these aren't primes anymore. So what happens? Well, I'm going to fix, right? I'm going to fix x equals 0, all right? And y has to be something positive. So if we multiply this out, this is equal to negative 2y, okay, 0. And then we get, uh, we get negative, uh, yeah, this is a 2 and then we get negative y, okay? So at this point here, I'm actually moving in the negative x, negative y direction. Well, guess what that is? The negative x, negative y direction, I didn't mean to erase all that. The negative x, negative y direction is this direction, isn't it? Okay, and so that means my spiral then is rotating counterclockwise because at every point zero comma y right i'm rotating in the negative x negative y direction so i start moving in the negative x negative y direction here uh even here i start moving in the negative x negative y direction and so yeah i'm rotating counterclockwise on my spiral 
And to verify this, go over here and here we go. Look at that, right? So here's a stable spiral. Oh, okay. So it looks like this, right? Um, but the idea is the same is that I'm rotating counterclockwise. So a stable spiral, again, you can tell that I've never had to draw these in my life. Um, very few professors require you to know this. Uh, the characterization is much more important. So that's what it looks like. And then you got like that, and then you got like that, and then you got like that. And yeah, okay, so you get the idea. So that's what a stable spiral is. And we're still going counterclockwise. So here we're going like that, we're going like that, we're going like that, and we're going like that. Okay. Yep, there we go. And so in conclusion, right, that's exactly what they tell us. Dx dt is less than zero. So that means in the x direction, we're moving in the negative way. That's what that is, right? We're moving in the x at, at this line right here, in the x direction, we're moving in the negative direction. So that's a phase portrait. I encourage you guys to do the other one than part C uh, in the book. And yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, linear systems. Linear autonomous systems is what this chapter is called, if I am not mistaken. Yeah, the phase plane for linear autonomous systems. And all that's left now are uh, nonlinear systems. And those are a little bit harder because the equilibrium point's not just at zero, zero. And uh, again, you, you, don't really, you really have to sketch them. Again, the biggest thing is this table right here. You just need to know how to characterize these points. Honestly, that's it. And I really doubt you'll even see a linear system question on your exam because professors will just go to the nonlinear systems, which we'll cover jump to right now in the video I'm going to record.